A Napa guy knows the only way you'd give a freshly minted driver a brand new car is if he promises to never drive it. Instead, let him grind the gears and knock over the neighbor's mailbox in something a little more suited to his skill level. And with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, he can safely drive something that's nearly as old as he is. It's not perfect, but it's perfect for him. That's Napa know-how. Blog Talk Radio. Well, good evening, folks. And thank you for tuning in with me once again to another edition of True Conservative Radio. And, of course, I am your host, the man they call Ghost. And once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. I see we have a lot of folks in here kicking back with us live on the broadcast. I'd like to thank you for tuning in. And, of course, if you want to be the first one to figure out or find out when I conduct another broadcast or one of these sporadic broadcasts, Follow me on Twitter, folks, the easiest way, and the name to follow is Ghost Politics. Once again, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. It is episode number 181 for all the individuals keeping up with the program. we got a lot to talk about. I know uh, it's been a little while since I conducted a broadcast, and uh, for all you folks that are tuning in and uh, I guess weren't... Uh, Listening in to the mainstream boob tube media, or we're living under a rock, or you know, whacking off in your bathroom, whatever you were doing. But President Barack Obama had a speech in the oral office. You know, you know he, he, we all remember old Slick Willie turning the Oval Office into the oral office. Uh, but anyway, he uh, had a speech in the o- oral office about. The ending of combat, or the withdrawal of combat troops in Iraq, he also went on to allude that the whole reason why we're suffering in the economy was because of the previous administrations and their war tactics and all this other crap. And, you know, when I heard that speech, I have to admit to you, folks, I got a little depressed. I got a little depressed because you know what I subliminally read into that? More taxation. All right? More taxation is what I'm hearing from old Barack Hussein Obama over there, or Barry, you know, old Barry over there. So, you know, I'm a little upset, folks. I mean, you know, I got an acid bubble churning up in my gut, you know. It's just it's just eating away. I'm trying to, you know, drink, uh, you know, the equivalent of an effervescent, which is, the, uh, which is a beer. You know, to me, I decided to drink a little bit. Uh, drinking a little beer. I know it's after 12:30 Central Time down here in Texas, and uh, and of course I am the uh, you know I am over the age of 21, that's for sure. And I just you know hopefully everybody's out there having a libation, a cigarette, a, a drink, or something because we have to do some kind of vice to get through this disgusting, despicable display of leftism and liberal infestation in American government and all kinds of bureaucrats. I mean, it's just uh. anyway. Here, here, here's to you, folks. I'm gonna. You're going to hear me cracking open beers throughout the night here. And if I do end up slurring my words, if I end up not acting like myself, if I end up uh, acting a little inebriated, I want to extend my apologies right now. It's just that I'm depressed. I'm depressed that I'm living in a leftist idea, you know. I'm sick and disgusted that, you know, as simple as a lot of the Economic problems that we're suffering from now are easy to solve. It's this liberal regime's insistence on not doing it. And uh, I just don't know. I don't really care. No, I'm not drinking any Louis the 13th. I'm drinking some old Billy Carter beer, you know, some old cheap beer because uh, I got a 30-pack of it. And I doubt I'm going to, you know, chug the whole 30, but, uh, you know, I definitely got some beer. And I want to drink a little bit so I can... So I can release some of the stress. I feel like a freaking monkey's on my back, bashing my brains in with a meat cleaver, for heaven's sake, you know? Let me take a drink really fast. Uh. Anyway, folks, I want to thank you for tuning in. And, of course, if you want to chime in on anything on the broadcast, 646-652-4869 is the number to call. 
I want to talk a little bit about Obama's address to the nation from the oral office because I think it's very important about uh, specific things that he said. Okay, First and foremost, uh, he tried to insist that there was some sort of victory, that we have some sort of reason to hold our heads high uh, withdrawing the troops from Iraq with basically, and I hate to disrespect our troops, but all we have is our little pink willies in our hand as we cross the Middle East and come back and you know get deployed to Afghanistan or North Korea or, or whatever the liberal regime's thinking about next. But I find it disgusting that this despicable little governing body that can't even figure out how to run itself in Iraq, that we put in there, that our troops, that our young people, that our patriots put into power, these individuals have been able to sell this oil that's been pumping out of their damn oil fields out there on the world market, and they have a surplus as a government. Now, I know it's hard to believe, and I've been saying this on a consistent basis, they have a surplus. You understand? They're not in debt. Okay? And what I don't understand is, is they're like, you know, three, four trillion dollars in a surplus at this point in time. And meanwhile, we've taken at least over a trillion, maybe a little bit more than a tr two trillion dollars, whatever the exact amount is. I'm not uh, keeping track. I mean, these numbers are so goddamn big, uh, you could literally have a lifetime adding them up. But uh, inevitably, what's happened is we have invested not only trillions of dollars in this Iraq situation, but blood and treasure, young people that have sacrificed not only their lives, but their limbs. And we're just running, you know, this liberal regime, the, 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 the henchman, the, 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 the mouthpiece, the, the Obama, Barry, I'm talking about him. He has the audacity to get on the TV and, and somehow uh, uh, coddle this idea that we're cutting and running, but that's exactly what we're doing, damn it, we're cutting and running. We're cutting and running with nothing. And what I don't understand is, why don't we do one of the following, and, and if you can look back in the archives, folks, at blogtalkradio.com slash ghost, I have talked about this time and time and time again. I've been talking about why doesn't the American government, or why doesn't the American people force the American government into forcing this Iraqi governing body that we put into power, why don't we force them to either start paying off their tab that they've incurred from us liberating them, or why don't they just give us oil pro bono, uh, you know, all out of their oil fields, we'll cut it off their tab, and let me tell you who would be shaking in their boots when they did it, OPEC, these slimy, disgusting, turban-wearing royal families in the OPEC little cartel, it, they, they would be shaking in their boots, we would screw up their market, you know? Why are we not talking about this? Because we've got liberals that, with all due respect, just by the actions they've taken, just by the things they've done, it seems to me that they are purposely destroying this country. And I'm not trying to say that because I'm trying to be some fear monger out here. I mean, just look at the actions and look at what was promised. It's a disgrace. You know, I mean... It, this is America. This isn't some garbage little, uh, you know, North Korea communist government where bureaucracy is the majority of the day. But take a look at how many jobs are being created, you know, that are – and it's really not bringing down the unemployment rate. It's just making it stagnant a little over 9.5%. But it's mostly government jobs. Yeah. Government jobs that are paid by taxpaying dollars. Now, <clears throat> I don't know. I'm not trying to say that I am a Harvard graduate economist, but what's going to happen when not only do these bureaucrats, but the idiots that these bureaucrats are bailing out, like Wall Street and the automobile industry and the healthcare care industry, and then the poll in America, the poll in America, uh, all these people that are collecting off the taxpayer dime, when is it going to be that there's more people collecting than there is putting in? And how is that sustainable? You know, uh, Ben Bernanke, the Federal Reserve Chairman, uh, came out in a speech earlier this week stating that uh, the Federal Reserve is willing to commit more, uh, you know, buying back of government bonds and all this other crap. But, but, but inevitably, 
What he said in that statement is what I've been saying the whole entire time I've been conducting this broadcast. We cannot continue to allow these freaking autocrats, these disgusting, despicable slime balls in Washington, to continue to spend our money in our names, all right? Because not only is it ruining us as a superpower in the international community, it's degrading the integrity of the dollar. It's making us look like complete buffooneries, and we're transitioning into some kind of socialist idea. It's disgusting, man. It's, uh, Fabian socialists from the turn of the 20th century are probably creaming in their coffins right now. And, I, and then back to this Obama oral office speech. I mean, you know, that's what the speech was about. You know, he was probably he was trying to give a pep talk to the guys that have committed years out here fighting for this uh, in this military theater. They've committed years, and he has the audacity to sit here and say. You have the ability to hold your head high, and you're coming home, and yeah. What are you talking about? We're in debt because of this war, and then he has the audacity. This is, Obama has the audacity in the, in the next sentence to say, well, the reason the economy isn't good is because of the wars. Well, why don't you, as the supposed leader of this country, force this Iraqi governing body to either cough up some of that surplus money into our economy or into our national debt, you know, just basically give it to us, or why don't we tell them that they need to give us pro bono oil so that we can offset the damn whole petroleum price worldwide. OPEC, I'm telling you, their turbines would be turning purple. You know, because they couldn't believe if that ever happened. I mean, they, they wouldn't be able to believe it. Wouldn't be able to believe it whatsoever. Uh, anyway, folks, we're talking a little bit about the Obama address to the nation from the oral office. Uh, 646-652-4869. He tried to sugarcoat the cutting and running from Iraq. And don't get me wrong, I don't want I I don't want a permanent stay in Iraq. I don't want uh, you know United States troops controlling the country. But let's be honest, we invested a lot of blood and treasure into this uh, idea here. And at least what we can do is you know get paid back to some extent. I mean, even the limeys, you know, even these tea drinking Brits paid us back when we bailed those idiots out as they were getting blitzkrieged in World War II. You know. Even the even these you know uh, sniveling little Brits, you know, paid us back, all right, and they just recently paid us back. I mean, the, the full and total amount. So, you know, much props to you limeys out there, all right. Keep drinking your damn tea, and you know, you know, you, you, you might want to fix your grill while you're at it. Uh, anyway, uh, another thing that he addressed to the nation is uh, not only was he sugarcoating the withdrawal from Iraq. But he was also trying to blame the economic woes that we're currently finding ourselves in on the previous administration's spe war spending. And, uh, of course, if you just heard my previous statements, I said that that would have been rectified had we held Iraq accountable in its debt to the American nation. But instead, we have a president that's cutting and running, and basically we're eating the losses. That's what he's saying in the speech there. You just got to eat it and like it. That's all you got to do, just eat it and like it. So, uh, you know, that's basically what that was. And uh, then he tried to, in the same breath, blame, uh, you know, uh, blame the previous administration for the cause. No, 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 Mr. Mr. President, Barry, it's your disgusting regime that's in power that has ruined our country. Your regime that's in power, the liberal regime, has spent more money in its, what is it, 18 months, 16 months? I don't even know how long it's been. It seems like 20 years. But you have done more damage and spent more of the American taxpayers' money than uh, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, uh, Ronald Reagan, and Jimmy Carter, and all these idiots combined. So for you to sit over here and try to blame the fact that our economy is weak because of war spending, it's because of your incompetent leadership, sir. And a lot of people start to realize it. 
And I want to hear from you folks. 646-652-4869 is the number to call. All right, if you've got something to say or if, if you agree or disagree, I want to hear from you. You know, I mean, oh, there's still a lot of Obama minions out there that actually believe that this, this is somehow the right thing, that this uh, liberal regime and this uh, president is, are infallible. They're just infallible of any kind of wrongdoing. Let me take a drink of beer here. Uh. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm trying to chug it, you know, because uh, I'm trying to conduct a damn show here while I'm drinking beer because I'm, I'm, I'm getting drunk. Well, I'm not really getting drunk. I'm just I'm just trying to get a little inebriated here. Anyway, we only have a couple of callers here, so let's take these calls here. Uh, one, 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 you there? Fuck you! What? Fuck you, you cockfucker! Uh, how original, you stupid fat-sounding moron. You sound like you got, you know, packets of ketchup guzzling down your gullet as we speak, you stupid half-a-tard. Uh, uh, 617, you there? Yeah, man, can you hear? Yeah, what's going on, man? What's up, Ghost? Hey, I, I'm a big fan of your show. I just had a question and then I had a comment. The Certainly. question is, I just want to know what the OG stands for in Ghost. I never knew. No G? <clears throat> yeah. The original ghost. Oh, nice. Hey, and uh, I wanted to talk about your stimulus package, too. I know your past couple of shows you've been talking about it, about yeah. how uh, we're wasting money at the taxpayer's expense, the, you know, the free cell phones for cigarette addicts and all that jokes. Uh, well, it's you know a lot I mean? more than that, but I agree. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what about it? Well, you know what I think we're wasting money on? What's that? It's um, that Pat Tillman statue that went up in Arizona and this new Pat Tillman movie coming out. I mean, that Pat guy was... Till, are you kidding me? Pat Tillman? Pat, Pat Tillman. It's a waste a, of money for the Pat Tillman statue in Arizona. Are, are you kidding me? Pat Tillman was a scumbag and a wannabe Rambo. I mean, he... How did he uh, get killed? Uh, uh, hold on. Hold, hold on. Just a second. i, I, I got to take a goddamn drink of beer before you... you did, I'm not hanging up on you. Just wait before you flap your yapper, because I need to I need to guzzle down this beer. All right, take your time. <laughs> All right, now what, what what are you saying about Pat Tillman, son? He's a scumbag. The guy showed. Now, why don't you himself. elaborate? Elaborate with some substance on how you can call a, a patriot like Pat Tillman a scumbag. A patriot? Randy Moss is a patriot. Pat Tillman's a Ra- scumbag. Randy Moss? Are you are you kidding me, sir? Is this some kind of a prank call? A prank call? What are you talking about? Because let me tell you something. I, I, I mean, Look at my tax pays. You can my hear the tremor in dollars. my voice. I'm so goddamn livid by you sitting there de- desecrating the great name of Pat Tillman, you piece of garbage. And you have yet to provide any kind of substance other than some garbage that Randy Moss is a patriot more than Pat Tillman. I mean, why don't you explain to me this uh, a little bit more? I mean, I mean why don't you elaborate it? Well, no, I was being facetious, you know, Moss Patriot, but Pat Tillman, I'm paying, I'm working nine to five, I'm busting my ass for what, to pay for a statue for some scumbag who quit the NFL, goes into the military and shoots himself in the foot? Are you kidding me? And they're coming shoots up with a Shoots himself in the foot? Are you kidding me? Oh, are you kidding me? You know, get this idiot off. I'm just, get him off! I mean, did you hear this? Did everybody hear this disgusting, despicable jerk just completely desecrate a great patriot like Pat Tillman? But you see, this is how these leftists have got American people today. This is how they are now, all right? They have no kind of respect. I mean, look at them. I mean, have you walked outside your door? Have you walked out in any kind of social arena? A goddamn grocery store? Have you been to a grocery store lately? I mean, the damn sour scowls. It seems like a like a physically imprinted frown on all these people's faces, and they have all these kids around them with, you know, disgusting-looking uh, clothes, and they look like they have dirty-ass skin and, you know, uh, shit-stained diapers and all this other crap. And they expect somebody like me to feel sorry for these people. They expect somebody like me who's worked hard and done what I've had to do 
to, 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 to feel sorry for these people? I mean, a liberal like that that just called desecrating Pat Tillman's name wants me to feel sorry for some stupid bimbo who shits out eight kids from eight different fathers and collects uh, $8,000 entitlement from the federal government currency of people like me. I mean, this is how these liberals are, folks. Did you hear that crap? Did you hear that crap? Did you goddamn hear that crap? It's disgusting! It's disgusting! Pat Kilman was a damn patriot, you stupid, disgusting moron, and it's a disgrace. And let me underscore that again. It was a disgrace! How that young man died, you piece of crap. And I know that was a prank call, but you were a filthy, disgusting, despicable scoundrel to sit here and suggest such a thing. Shoots himself in the foot. Why don't you shoot yourself in the head? Why don't you hang yourself? I mean, do you understand, folks? I mean, this is what I say every time I come up on the broadcast here. We have too many people involved in the political process that have no business being involved in the political process. Do you understand? I mean, this is why I'm saying we need major voter reform. Let me repeat that again. We need major voter reform because if we don't, we're going to continue to see the incompetent governments that we've come to know and love. We're going to continue to see the disgusting leadership that we've come to accept. We need voter reform. We need it now. And let me tell you something. The exclusive party that should be able to vote, the exclusive party that should be the only people that have the right to vote are those that pay taxes. Those that pay taxes or don't collect entitlements. All right? And that's all there is to it. If you collect a goddamn government entitlement out of my tax paying dime, you should not have the right to vote. You should not have the goddamn right to vote. In my, in my view, yeah, you're not even in the same class as anybody on the, on the American level. If you're collecting entitlement, you, you, you should be ashamed of yourself. Completely ashamed. Let me take a drink of this beer here. Ah. Feels a lot better here, I, and I know I, I shouldn't be drinking like that. I'm trying to drink like I'm some sort of a young man or something. But I mean, are you listening to this? I mean, did you hear the last caller? Did you hear our president? One one one, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's going on, man? What's going on? Shoot, nothing. I just want to talk about what the last caller said about uh, Pat Tillman. He is um, absolutely correct. He is wasting taxpayer money. Yeah, you know, you yeah, know I, I agree with this, 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 this is the same idiot, the same idiot that called last time. And you know what? I can hear the, bl the black dialect in your voice, all right? How quaint that it's a black man calling up because I am basically exposing the contradictions within Barack Obama. You know, some black man coming in, and he desecrates the name of Pat Tillman, trying to get a rise out of me. And, 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 you know, what else do I expect? I mean, uh, these liberals have rode this racial card far enough. And don't think that you can hide that black twang from me, all right? I mean, come on now, all right? I can hear it. Anybody who heard your voice can hear it there, too, boy. Don't be sitting there, you know, trying to, yeah. oh, my, hi, I, uh, you know, I can try to sound like I, uh, you know, have a correct dialect, but I actually talk like this, baby. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you know, whenever I hear something like that, I almost want to, you know, it makes me want to be black for a minute, you know? You know, uh, you know what? I'm not going to be black. I'm, I'm not going to do that. People emailed me, said I was racist when I did that, and I'm not going to do it. But what I am going to do, okay, what I am going to do is if my wife is awake after I do this program, I'm going to have her, ha I want to have her do the black guy handshake on my prick. All right, just for you there, Mr. Anti-Pat Tillman, all right, 
do the black guy handshake on my prick just for you, all right? And sorry for all the folks that took offense to that last statement, but, hey, it's after midnight, you morons, all right? Get used to it. Anyway, uh, we got a, a Deborah in the house. Are you there? Uh, ghost, don't tell you. Um, do the prick dance with me, you baby bunk. You uh, kid. Go. God, God, God. I mean, are you hearing this crap? I mean, this is a disgrace. I mean, it just gets me angry. Take another drink of beer. Sorry, folks. I mean, but this is the kind of crap. This is America, you know? People think that, you know, these idiots that call up are somehow planned or they, you know, they're, they're pre-rehearsed. This is America, assholes, all right? And if you don't believe me, I want you to call up. If you've got something good to say, I want to hear you say it. 646-652-4869 is the number to call here, all right? Anyway. We were talking about a Barack Obama's address to the nation from the oral office. Talked about how he sugar-coated cutting and running out of Iraq. We talked about how he blamed the economy on previous administrations because, oh, it was the glass guy that had a bunch of wars back then, and I, yeah, I just don't know what happened. Even though this uh, liberal regime and, and this uh, president have been responsible for more spending than all these damn presidents combined, it's a disgrace. And who did they give all that money to? Well, they recapitalized Wall Street. They nationalized the automobile industry. They nationalized the student loan industry. They federally mandated health insurance for everybody in the entire nation, including children. I mean, you know, give me a break, you know. Give me a freaking break. Anyway, one, 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 you there? Do you spit or swallow? I mean, this is black guy, isn't it? You're you're black, aren't you? Hell no, I'm white. Uh, you, you come on, don't you? I can I can tell I can tell that black twang in your voice. You're a West Coast I'm, black. I can tell right off the bat. I'm a I'm a cracker. Yeah, right. Give me a break. My just name, admit it. Just, let's have no. a conversation about it. Let's have a conversation okay. about it. First you're off, black, my right? name is no, I'm white. My name is Chrono. Are you kidding me? You, you sound blacker than Wesley Snipes on goddamn uh, 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 the Cash Money Brothers. What do you call that? New Jack City. Okay. Well, my name is Carlo. Last name Super Freak. And I mean, li- listen to the listen to the black twang in that voice. I mean, can you? Yeah. I mean, I, I, unfortunately, you don't sound black enough. You sound like an Uncle Tom. If I was a black oh, man, yeah. I'd, be offend- I'd, I'd be offended by you. I am a white man. What are you talking you about? You are not my white, is, all right? Let me tell you, I can sound, sound blacker than you. Check it out. <laughs> Check this out. My name is Chrono. Hey, Chrono, man, super up? freak. Hey, shut your ass up, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Motherfucker like me just chilling like a villain. You know what I'm saying? I think I'm going to be black all day now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Feel like I'm going to be black all day. Let's get some black music up in this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, I won't be black, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a black. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I be black, man. You know what I'm saying? Chillin' like a villain, baby. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that's enough. That's enough. The only reason I'm saying that is because I know I have a bunch of, uh, you know, people of the black persuasion. Uh, attempting to, uh, you know, facilitate, uh, you know, disorder on my show uh, because I basically expose contradictions uh, within the liberal regime and, and a variety of different of their offshoots, and they get a little upset about it. You know, I'm telling them they cannot continue with the race card. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work, son. All right? Anyway, uh, Miller, are you there? I'm Ghost. Why did you hang up on me, baby Buns? No, I don't like that. Crack it, Ghost, please, baby.
I'm sorry, folks. I know I'm drinking a lot. I'm not, I'm not trying to advocate, you know, consuming large amounts of alcohol, but do you see what I'm dealing with here? I had to witness the goddamn president speak about cutting and running and about blaming about the economy on somebody else when this is the man who made all these promises and all this other nonsense. I get on here and try to do a broadcast in an attempt to facilitate any kind of uh, debate that will spark some synapses in the brains of people. I get up on here. I try to have a few drinks so I can be a little bit uh, uh, smoother with the broadcast. But unfortunately, I get all these assholes that call me up, and they're pissing me off. And they're pissing me off to the point where I feel like I'm a goddamn powder keg. I feel like a goddamn powder keg is about to explode, and I cannot believe that this is the America that this country has turned itself into. And it makes me sick. It makes me want to puke. I mean, I, I can't even express the words to, 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 to facilitate my thought process. <sighs> Let me calm down. Let me go ahead and de- let's get another beer. We got a whole bunch of beer here. We got all kinds of beer. At least that's a good part, huh? <laughs> and this is American beer too. This ain't that Budweiser Belgian wooden shoe shit. All right, let's let's open up this beer. There we go. Another beer. Calm me down here. Calm me down. We all need something to calm ourselves down, you know what I mean? Because this world is overwhelming, folks. I'm telling you, it's overwhelming. It can take command of your soul and make you do weird things. 646-652-4869. Broth, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, Ghost. What's going on, man? Not much. How you doing? No, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to facilitate a broadcast to spark synapses in the minds of Americans, but instead I'm uh, being a victim of agitation by leftist agitators. Well, um, I, I actually am going to disagree with you on your point that uh, that this this cutting and running is, is such a terrible thing, mostly because of the because uh, I think we'd have to get out of there eventually, and. They, I don't think the Iraqi people are taking responsibility for themselves to get themselves ready for an, Amer- an American evacuation. So now is as good as the time as any before we sink too much treasury into this war and uh, and not get any th- get any dividends out out of it. Well, what about what about uh, the Iraqi governing body, which is you know believe it or not working on a surplus. They got three four trillion in surplus. They have no debt. Why are you know aren't we as the American people forcing our disgusting, despicable Big Brother government? Why aren't we forcing these guys to go and either get the money back that we spent liberating these folks, or have them uh, get the oil that's it's the second largest oil deposit in the world, uh, Iraq? Get that oil, give it to us pro bono. We'll cut it off their tab and have these OPEC. Uh, uh, Arabian countries that you know sit here and dictate the market of oil, shaking in their boots and lower the cost of, of energy. You know, instead of investing all this stupid stimulus money and all this garbage into green technology, we could have just you know done what I just suggested and lowered the cost of fuel back to 60, 70 cents again. Well, was there any uh, agreement between ourselves and the uh, and the Iraqi nation or the new Iraqi regime to? to pay us back for the war debts? Absolutely. Are you kidding me? There was an agreement, and let me tell you something else. We were sold that as the American public, and and, 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 and for this government to not come through on that promise is a disgrace to not only every man and woman that served in the military during this military theater, but these disgusting, despicable autocrats that are in in government today, that are in Washington, that are supposed to be doing all these little expenditures and these little power moves in our name. <laughs> all right, Ghost. I'll talk to you later, man. Thanks a lot, bro. Hey, do you have a blog or something? You want to, you want to plug something on here? Well, I, I always do a sports show on Saturday mornings with the Sports City Chefs, but that's not a, a politics thing, so I'll yeah, just well, do that. Well, hey, up. you know, politics and, uh, and sports, it happens, all right? You, you, what, what day is it? Maybe people, what, what, what do you talk about? Football, basketball, what? Uh, we do football on Saturday mornings. All right, man. Well, what, 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 what time? Uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. All right, man. Thanks a lot, Brock. Well, hopefully everybody tunes into that.
646-652-4869. White Snake, are you there? White Snake? Are you there? Hey, White Snake. Yeah, give me a break. We can't hear you, you silly bastard. Why don't you plug in your microphone or get, get a new phone or whatever the hell it is. 646-652-4869-619. You there? Hello? Go. Hey, what's what's going on, man? Yeah, what's up? Hey, you know what I did with your Texas? I bought a World of Warcraft account. Keep paying them that. You bought a World of Warcraft account on my taxes? Yep. You piece of dumb, stupid, fat, jelly-ass, computer kid crap. Get him off! You see, do you, you understand why I do this broadcast? I mean, uh, I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, uh, honestly, people, uh, why do you think I do this crap? You think I do this for my freaking health? Huh? I mean, my blood pressure heightens about 800 points every time I conduct a goddamn broadcast on this little network here. All right? And I try, and I try, and I try to facilitate some kind of uh, substance so that I could spark some synapses in you stupid milky liquors. And this is the kind of thanks that I get. Huh? This is the kind of crap. Huh? Yeah. Give me a break. 646-652-4869. We're going to take a couple of more callers. And let me tell you something. You uh, nipple clamp loving, butt plug up the ass looking, wish you had a girlfriend, but you're sitting up here playing with your pecker shaft, listening to my broadcast looking, uh, trolling, having uh, hot dog up the ass looking, chicken eating corn boy trash. You better have something to say that's worth the crap. And, and I'm telling you right now, I, I am going to get so livid. And so upset if, if if what I hear is nothing but, but, but prank calls here. All right? 215, you there? Yo, what's up, OG? Hey, what, what's going on? Nothing, but that's why you're the man. Get him off! I mean, that's why we love you. Stuff like that, you know? Yeah, I hear you. What, but, do, you uh, about, uh, what do you think about what's going on in America today? Uh, well, you know what I really think is that the mosque that's going next to 9-11, what do you think about that? The mosque? Well, you know, I, I'm not in agreements with it, but we are in a liberal regime where they're accepting it and, and not only that, promoting it. you got our president basically saying, hey, you know, live it and eat it and like it. So, I mean, what can we say? I mean, we can only say as much as we can, and, uh, you know, this government that we've elected feels that they're no longer public servants. Uh, they're dictators, and they can dictate anything they want because we put them in power. Uh, so, I mean, hey, that's just the way it's going to be, you know. Uh, you know this is the, the stupid uh, America that we're living in, man. Yeah. So you like Obama? What are you talking about? Like, oh, get, get him off. I don't like Obama. What are you, have you been listening? You see, this is what I'm saying, folks. Let me take another drink of this beer. This is what I'm saying, all right? I have been talking right now, and believe it or not, it's already been, I mean, it's already been over 30 or 45 minutes. I mean, I can't believe I've been talking this long. And I have been saying time and time again my stance on Barack Hussein Obama, and do you hear this stupid buffoon? Huh? So you don't like Obama? I mean, it's just disgusting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this time. I'm not going to talk about Obama and his cutting and running speech and uh, blaming Bush and everybody else previous for the bad economy and all this garbage. And what I'd like for you to do is uh, wherever you're at, all right, I want you to do this favor for me. I want you to do this favor. I want you to stop what you're doing. I don't care if you're flapping your fingers to some broad you think is Miss Anime Rotten Crotch on the Internet that you actually think you're going to – I don't know, a deposit a $10 in her Amazon.com account to get some phone banging session. Uh, I don't care if you're searching for porn or, or, or chatting with, uh, you know, uh, some sort of a Chris Hansen to catch a predator, uh, uh, you know, a pedophile situation. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care if you're playing with your Peter Popper. I don't care if you're, you know, munching your fat ass. I want you to stop what you're doing. All right? I want you to stop what you're doing. And I want everybody just to just relax. 
Relax wherever you're at. You're on the computer. I, I know you're, uh, you, we're all on the computer, so I know that you're in a chair. All right? I want you to t just calm down, and I want you to relax. All right? I want you to take some deep breaths, okay? In through your nose, out through your mouth, all right? I mean, this is the only way you stupid milky lickers are going to learn. All right? I want you to, I want you to breathe in and breathe out. Yeah. Breathe in, breathe out. And I want you stupid simpletons to start opening your goddamn mind. All right? Open your goddamn mind to what is going around. Open your mind. 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 Open your damn mind. Open your damn mind. This isn't some science show. This is not brain surgery. Why don't you act like a responsible human being and understand we live in the greatest civilization on Earth? We live in the greatest civilization on Earth! 150 years ago, we'd have to build our own house, we'd have to make our own clothes, we'd have to find our own food! It's a disgrace! It's a disgrace! Open your mind! Open your mind! Open your goddamn mind, you simple man! Open your stupid, silly, dumbass mind. All right? All right, all right, all right, just stop. All right, that's enough. But good God, I mean, I'm serious here. I mean, open your goddamn mind for a little bit. I got people in here saying, open your anus. I mean, this is how disgusting we're getting here, huh? Uh, open your anus. That's That's just great, you know? That's just uh, great. I'm sure your mammy would be proud of you that you're spreading your anus when I'm try trying to tell you to open your mind. You know what I'm talking about? Huh? I mean, it's just, it's just, this is sad. This is just a disgrace. All right, look at these guys. Hey, well, what's the mind, dude? Maui wowie, man. <laughs> You know what? Let, let's take some calls here. Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call here. One one one. You there? Okay. Uh, that, that, that gets no lulls, you asshole. All right. That was cheap ass. All right. Give me a break. You sound like a Mexican while you're at it. You sound like some idiot that had a broken English accent. All right. Let's get some lulls going on. If you're going to prank call me, at least get some balls and do something, all right? Stupid moron. One, 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 you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? What song was that? What? Give credit. Give credit to the song. Yeah, the song. I bought a flashlight with your taxes. Open your mind. I a, yeah, hey, I bought a flashlight with your taxes. Yeah, yeah, flashlight with your tag. Yeah, you're a sick little puppy, you know that? And that's the only piece of artificial poontang that you're ever going to get, you little fruity-ass milky licker. I can tell by the lack of bass in your voice that you barely got peach fuzz on your gnats, and that's why you were barely able to concoct the sentence that you did because your feminine little vernacular could barely think of it, you stupid moron. Six, four, six, you know? Yeah, you're stupid. Turn on your stupid radio. 770, you there? Hey, how's it going, Ghost? What's going on, man? 
Not much. I got a question for you. Uh, this is Kalen Fress in the chat room. I talked to you last week about the draft. Um, All right. Yeah, I remember yeah. what's going on, man. Well, what do you think? I, I run a website called nwostop.com, um, NWO right. New World Order, and I'm wondering what's your opinion on the New World Order. Well, you know, and I'm, I'm glad you asked that question. And, uh, you know, don't go away. Let me explain what I think about the New World Order. Uh, I think that there are attempts by a variety of different factions to globalize the entire world. Now, I have went into detail on what those factions are. Unfortunately, you have a bunch of, uh, you know, cult of personality ass clowns like Alex Jones and David Icke and Dave, uh, uh, Jason Burmas and uh, Luke Stupisky, or whatever the hell his name is. I mean, all these disgusting uh, supposed uh, freedom fighter frauds that are out here trying to claim that, uh, you know, they're Zionists and Masons and uh, reptilian lizard men, uh, Bilderbergers. I mean, there's all these different factions that supposedly uh, are dictating the chain of events. But what I feel, and what's more than obvious, these are the factions that are actually controlling or attempting to control or attempting to globalize the world. The first faction is the theocratic factions, the individuals that are spreading these big doctrines of international theocracy, talking about uh, the Catholic Church, talking about uh, Islam. I'm talking about these uh, you know, big, huge pools of of theocratic rule, you know, theocracy definitely wants to take control of the uh, of the entire globe. Uh, another faction is uh, political institutionalism. All right, political institutionalism like the UN and NATO, these international political institutions that have no right to say anything on anybody to anybody else, but you know who funds these political institutions on an international scale? We do. And yet the United Nations and NATO tries to tell us what to do. They even give China a humanitarian award. I mean, this is disgrace. This is horrible. Another faction trying to take control are the uh, nonprofit organizations, all right? I'm talking about the NGOs, non-government organizations, people like the Red Cross and the uh, what was it, Amnesty International. All right, these individuals are trying to take control of the uh, the world because I mean, haven't you noticed? Whenever there's a war, the Red Cross is on both sides of the military theater, as if they have no uh, no qualms or no fear that they're going to get blasted upon, even though they're right in the middle of the military theater. I mean, doesn't anybody ever question that sort of thing? I mean, and don't you ever don't you also think it's kind of convenient that Warren Buffett, the second richest man in the world, the third richest man, uh, is actually going around the world trying to tell people to donate his uh, uh, donate half their billions to charity. He's trying to convince billionaires to donate half of their uh, wealth to charity. And why do you think that is? Because these NGOs, Red Cross, and and all these other institutions that are trying to globalize the world have an influence. Last but not least, folks, the, uh, the, the, the other influence that's trying to take control of the world, economics. And that's where I believe where we can attempt to interconnect each other because we are the superior being on this planet. And the way we can interconnect each other and, and, and is through economics and capitalism. Capitalism is the true, ultimate human motivator. It, it, it creates innovation. It, it, it creates uh, creativity. And that's where I believe that if we're going to globalize in any form, we should globalize through economics. Are you still there, 770? Yeah, I'm still here. Um, I uh, I would agree with most of what you said. Um, I actually I, I think that some of the people like Alex Jones and Jason Burmis, they, I, I'll agree they're uh, – Exaggerating the point a lot of the times. Um, well, that they're telling half truths, so that uh, you know a whole group of uneducated people, which is mostly the American youth, can feel that they're getting exclusive knowledge that nobody else has. When in actuality, they're, they're double talking. I mean, here's Alex Jones, 
a man claiming to be a freedom fighter and against the New World Order, against, you know, he tries to say 80 different factions depending on what day of the week you, you know, uh, and, and what video he's plugging. He, he, he says 80 different things, uh, you know, that is the cause of all our problems, uh, one of which is the Federal Reserve, and yet this man can sit here and talk about ending the Federal Reserve, the Federal Reserve is evil, and yet he collects Federal Reserve notes every time he collects advertising revenue from his uh, radio show, every time somebody buys a uh, little T-shirt or, you know, a little DVD or whatever, whatever the case might be. All right, I mean, and Alex Jones, I've called him out many times. He's a fraud. He, he extorts fear. And just like his other offshoots, Jason Burmas and, and Luke uh, Stupinski, whatever the hell his name is, uh, from what I understand, Luke Stupinski is misappropriating funds from that uh, Truth Now movement. I mean, let's, let's be honest. These people are de just as despicable as the idiots that they're claiming that they're trying to stop. I'm not, uh, I'm not sure who the Luke Stupinski guy is, but... Um... That that guy, that blonde-headed idiot from you know Truth Now or whatever the hell, you you know who he is. He he he's next to Alex Jones all the time. You know who I'm talking about. Well, have you uh, have you seen the the documentary Invisible Empire? Uh, you know I've seen so many of these ridiculous uh, uh, these ridiculous documentaries. I mean, they, you've seen one, you've seen them all, man. I mean, inevitably they tell you what possible they tell you what could happen but they provide no solution and the only solutions that the uh, you know supposed alternative media movement is providing are anarchy i mean you know right. and, and we we know that there is no precedent in social order history that even proves that anarchism is a viable option and if you're going to be like noam chomsky and his wannabe academic ass and if you happen to know noam chomsky please i'd be more than willing to uh, intellectually cut him down lower than a leprechaun's nutsack, but this moron has the audacity to sit here and claim that anarchism is some sort of a, a great thing when he quotes the Chapatistas in Mexico as the model to abide anarchy or to apply anarchy to. I mean, do you understand that this movement, this so-called New World Order movement, is a damn. Uh, a money-making scheme, and anybody who you know buys into it is what they're doing. They're buying into it. Well, I, I agree that some people are buying into it. Um, just to, for example, on the, the what you said about Alex Jones and the you know he he still uses the Federal Reserve notes. There have actually been a, a number of people who have tried to you know create their own currencies, which are constitutional, but um, you know they usually get raided by the IRS and. They end up in prison for 50 years or so, so I I can't really fault them for you know you got to play in the system to an extent. Sadly, um, uh, I, I disagree with you, man. I've given you enough airtime. I've given you a plug of your website. Look, uh, if you really want to know what's globalizing uh, everything, why don't you take a look at those institutions that I've stated, and uh, and 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 their divisive little issues that they have us you know divided on culture, race. Uh, religion, a political philosophy, it's, it's disgusting, all right? Nobody talks about that in Alex Jones land. You know, they don't talk about why, you know, we're all so enthralled about certain ideas. They just talk about, hey, look, that, look, look at this, and, you know, grassy knolls, and, I mean, give me a break. Reptilian lizard men. I mean, give me a freaking break. You know, you can, you can tell, uh, you can tell Alex Jones to eat a dick up till he hiccups, all right? I hate that piece of crap. 815, you're on the air. Hey, I'm on. I'm on. Yeah, uh, you're on the air. I'm oh, sorry. Yes, uh, I kind of want to talk about our president right now. All right, go ahead. Uh, uh, if, if the recent stories, it's kind of disturbing. Uh, sto stories coming up about him. Uh, uh, yeah, you're talking too slow, you stupid, stumbling, mumbling little jerk. One, 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 you're on the air. Yeah, you're too slow. Get, get, get a better connection, you 144K modem, uh, 386SX, idiot. 111, you're on the air. 111, you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? Um, I was wondering if you had Battletoads. Yeah, give me a break. You sound about 12 years old, you stupid, ditzy broad. All right? 
I mean, you know, what are you doing on the Internet? You should be going to school, all right, you stupid, ditzy broad, all right? I'll tell you why you're on the Internet, because you probably got a single mother, and she's encouraging you to be, you know, some little dirty dishrag whore hopping from penis to penis to penis because she wanted that type of attention when she was younger, but she was a fatty, all right? Give me a break. All right, uh, well, what else we got here? Uh, uh, you know, uh, another one, 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 you there? No, you're too you're too late. All right. One, my one, one in there. Oh, Crikey Ghost, I want you to think my opera house in my Ula Rue. Well, you sound like some fruity ass bastard service in a glory hole. Uh one one one, you there? Oh, Jesus Christ. Another one one one, are you there? Man, what a bunch of fails, man. How about six four six, you there? Hello? Yeah. Oh, you know, my huevo. Do you, do you know anything about fucking magnets? You yeah, fucking why don't you, faggot. Why don't, you, why don't you shove a burrito up your cheese hole there, buddy? All right? I'll tell you what. For all you prank callers that are out there, all right, why don't you get a little bit more original? And secondly, why don't you get a little bit of this, all right? Why don't you get a little bit of this? All right, all you prank callers, get a little bit of that, all right? I mean, that's beer drinking for your ass here, all right? And take a whiff of this. Yeah, stupid pieces of trash. I mean, come on. I'm sitting here trying to have serious discourse, and I got a bunch of milky liquors sitting here calling me up. They're not even, you know, a per- Finding any kind of decent uh, prank calls. I mean, if you're going to prank call, at least be original, you unoriginal bastards. All right? 646-652-4869. You know, uh, we're almost uh, into the second hour, so I'm going to transition from what I was talking about previous uh, about, uh, what is this, Uh, Barack or Obama. I want to talk a little bit about Glenn Beck, and I want to talk about his little pathetic revival that he had out there in Washington that he didn't know but coincided with the I Have a Dream speech by Martin Luther King. Only infuriating the liberals that much more on their little racial card. That, oh, you're a racist. You don't like Obama, baby. I mean, it just infuriates that, you know? And I think that Glenn Beck and I've said this before, is a complete and utter fraud, just like Alex Jones. And you can tell them both I said that, all right? Alex Jones, you know, gets the scraps. You know, he's like the gutter pimp of, you know, uh, uh, hyper-sensational journalism, you know? I mean, that's what Alex Jones, he's like, he's like the gutter pimp. Glenn Beck, on the other hand, is actually making millions of dollars off of exploiting the same type of fear. And don't get me wrong, a lot of his things are valid. A lot of his arguments are valid. A lot of his leftist arguments against this regime, valid. But inevitably, what is he exactly? He's a gold pumper. I mean, have have you uh, seen or, or, or heard his broadcast? I mean, there's always some gold company. You know, he's always saying, yeah, I'm investing in gold and gold. I mean, he's a gold-pumping, dumb piece of garbage, and you can tell him I said that, all right? I mean, Glenn Beck is a disgusting, despicable fraud. And, and what's unfortunate is that he's got these teabaggers out here, you know, these these damn teabaggers that claim to be ultra-patriots and, and all this other nonsense. Uh, and yet, you know, what do they do? They put fucking teabags on their head. As if that's patriotic. You know, we got people dying in theaters of combat in parts of the world we won't even ever get to see, and yet they think that they're, you know, patriotic because you got some stupid whore with a little stupid hat on with tea bags hanging down. You know, I mean, it's just, it's just a disgrace. It's just an utter disgrace, and I, I just can't believe that this is America. You know, I, I, I just can't believe it. You know, uh, What's funny is that we've got Mexicans coming into this country 
I mean, millions at a time, you know, you know, crawling in through sludge and, you know, all this other nonsense to get to this country, and they're working below minimum wage, below minimum wage, and yet they're still able to save up enough money to be an actual marketing base that is that can be advertised to by corporate America. I mean, haven't you noticed a lot more Spanish-speaking uh, uh, little uh, uh, advertisements during the uh, what was it, uh, NFL or the basketball or any other sporting event? Haven't you noticed more Mexican people in advertisements? I mean, give me a break. All right. Six four six six five two four eight six nine. Let's talk. Let's take some more callers here. Two hundred. You there? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hey, what's going on? Man, I can't hear you. Why don't you get a better phone, you milky liquor? All right. Five one five. You there? Yeah. What's going on, man? Hey, I was just saying. Uh, you were talking about the whole Glenn Beck tea bag thing. I kind of. I kind of disagree. I kind of like to get teabagged a little bit. Yeah, you, you you sound by the lack of bass in your voice. You like to get more than teabagged, huh? You like you like to get uh, you know bent over, you know, taking it up the poop chute, huh? Am I right? Yeah, you're definitely yeah, right. Of course, I can oh, tell yeah. by your your fruity ass voice. Yeah. Huh? Were you raised oh, by yeah. your mammy? All, were you raised all by the your time. mammy? Yeah. Yeah, of course you were. Yeah, what a defense mechanism, man. Huh? I'm just going to say, yeah, yeah. Even though I'm backed in a corner and you made me look lower than a leprechaun's nutsack. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Stupid, silly-ass bastard. Sit over there and shut your mouth, boy. All right? And go look for your daddy. Go over there and go give your mom a couple of slaps to the mouth and say, where's my daddy? All right, where's my daddy, baby? As a matter of fact, uh, you know, for 515, I actually have uh, an audio tape, believe it or not, of your mom talking to your dad. I, I Believe it or not, I, I actually have 515's uh, mom talking to his dad. I mean, let's go ahead and run that right now. I'm going to take a little bit of a break. Here's 515 mother talking to the father. All right, here it is. Uh, go ahead and run that, do you?
my thoughts in me, that's all. Fuck you, I so fucking do because you hurt me so bad. I didn't you insult do me with every fucking I did not do breath. anything, I apologize for nothing. You fucking selfish I did you not do anything, I apologize for nothing.
We're talking about Glenn Beck's revival in Washington and how it was a complete pathetic fraud. It makes America look like a bunch of stupid morons that don't really know what's wrong in America. And not only that. You've got Republicans and dumbass teabaggers fighting against each other here. And I want you to, you know, I want to hear what you say. Oh, what, do, what do you got to say about that? 646-652-4869. Uh, here we are, 617, you there? Hey, what's up, Ghost? What's going on, man? Man, how you doing? I'm just chilling like an insane villain. Yeah, man. I'm. Uh, you know me, I used to call on the show before. I'm part of the 9-11 Truth Commission. Oh, you're, okay, well, okay, what's going on? Yeah, I saw you in the chat room today. I told you all about I was setting up a meeting with uh, Alex Jones. Oh, yeah? Well, well, what happened with that? Ah, man, uh, you told me your show was going to be on 12 p.m. Oh, uh, get on. him, I could get this idiot off. I said 12 a.m. Like, I ever have a show during the day. You stupid, silly bastard. Don't sit over here and, you know, oh, yeah, I was going to get Alex Jones on your show, but I, I thought it was 12.30 p.m. Even though Alex Jones does a show at that time, you silly bastard. Let me tell you something. Alex Jones wouldn't have the balls to come up on this broadcast. Do you understand that? He wouldn't have the balls. I would make him look like a mental midget. I would make him look lower than Roseanne Barr chasing after a greasy cheeseburger with her hands tied behind her back with John Goodman backing her up. I mean, do you understand? I mean, he would not know what to say because he has no substance when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, actually discussing his so-called conspiracy theorists. And anybody who knows Alex Jones, you can tell him I said that, all right? You can tell him I said that. One, 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 you there. Hello? Yeah, what's going on? Um, I know you didn't like my... Yeah, you sound like some stupid cum-gurgling piece of... Uh, trash that probably shitted out about two kids, all right? Turn down your damn computer and then call back there, you dish rag whore. One, 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 you're on the air. Yeah, yeah, well, why don't, why don't you get it straight there, you pal? All right, uh, 815, you there? Look at this. Are, are, you, are, you, are you kidding me? Is everybody hearing this crap? What are you, fucking Pavarotti? Get him off! One, 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 you there? Yeah, you're taking too long, you stupid, silly bastard. One, 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 you there? Hello? Yeah, uh, what's going on? Yeah, you got, you say the burritos? Bur burritos. What? Do you have any burritos? Nimino piki pani. You sound like a stupid, broken English, stupid Mexican. You bastard. mad? You you mad? And and not, and not only are you a stupid, silly Mexican bastard, you're a broken English one at that one. You know what I mean? Don't don't make fun of me. You can't even sound like a true like Pachuco. You sound like some fruit bowl bastard service in a glory hole in East Los. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you sound like. You sound like, you know, you're the Vato they all go up to when, you know, the, the, the Vatos get out of prison, you know, after about five or ten years. They go and see your uh, uh, house so that, you know, you, you can service them like a goddamn uh, 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 golf ball going through garden hose. Give me a damn break. I mean, this is the kind of crap I'm getting, you know. This is the kind of garbage that I get on a consistent basis all the time, all right? All the time. And th this is America. This is America right here. 412, you there? Hello? Yeah, what's up? Hi. Um, I was just wondering why you sound like a douchebag. Well, at you least don't I don't do sound all... like some fruity-ass bastard like yourself. I mean, have you heard yourself on a recorder lately? Um, I want to talk about how and why you look like a douchebag, Ghost, because I want to see a toolbox. Yeah, that's how I mean, shut your stupid ass, all right? If you're going to insult me, the least you could do is have some bass in your voice and sound like a man, all right? Sound like a man instead of sounding like one of these, you know, fruity-ass, feminized imbeciles that have been asserted the absolute pussification into their mental psyche. You know what I'm talking about? That's what's happened in America, the absolute pussification. You, can, you, you heard that in that last clip of Mel Gibson losing it over that stupid Russian slut. 
All right, the pussification of American male, right? Right here in America, thanks to the feminist movement. All right? Thanks to the feminist movement. All right? I just want to tell you, shut up. All right? One, 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 you there? Why don't you get a new microphone, you asshole, and get in with the 21st century? What did you get your goddamn computer at? The SWAT mate? Give me a break. It's all treble, you jerk. I mean, you should have a digital uh, microphone at the very least. If you're not, you're a fucking poser. 200, you there? Oh, Jesus Christ. You're trying to sound like a chick or something? Oh, and you hung up, too. You're trying to sound like a chick? Give me a break. I got your mom over here. Hey, 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 mom, you want to talk to the, you want to talk to this idiot or what? Here, talk to him. Say something. Um, hello, fucking assholes. I want you to go to sleep tonight, you motherfuckers. Yeah, you, you see that right there? That, that was your whore mother right there. And and if you don't, if you don't stop talking garbage to me, I'm going to auction off this heifer for a slab of T-bones and a, and a couple of uh, ribeye steaks. I will auction her off right here on the microphone, all right? I will auction her off on the show. I mean, who, who wants a piece of this heifer here? Here, talk again. Here, talk. Hello, you stupid motherfuckers. And uh, Don't bet on me. I'm not some piece of meat. Shut up and give me a... Uh, who wants to bet on this whore, huh? Come on, Alan, me, file me, ten, one, five, me, thirty, me, thirty, five, me, forty, me, forty, five, me, forty, me, me, file me, forty, five, this dirty asshole. She'll look at dirty hole, she'll make you say whoa, she'll look at dirty hole, she'll make you say whoa. Come on, hey, we got five bucks right here from Redemption, we got forty, five, me, thirty, five, me, forty, oh, we got seventy, five, me, forty, five, me, dirty asshole. Anyway, um, I think we've, uh, you know, pretty much worn out the Glenn Beck discussion, all right? Now we're going to talk a little bit about Katrina. Five years later, Hurricane Katrina. Isn't that right, folks? Oh, yeah. Hurricane Katrina. Now, what have we learned from this? Uh, we've learned that we've sent over 9,000 different, uh, you know, uh, home improvement guys over there, and yet after five years they can't build anything but, you know, tin cans with, you know, some solar panels on there, you know? Uh, let me tell you, I'm in Texas, all right, and for some reason, Texas decided to be some humanitarian and, you know, accept all these Katrina victims, you know, like, you know, they, they decided, oh, we're going to put them out here in these FEMA camps, you know, the uh, Kelly Air Force Base in San Antonio and, the, you know, say in Houston and, you know, all this other crap, right? Well, I actually knew people that donated their time to this uh, Katrina situation. You know, they went in and, uh, at, you know, uh, one of them was an uh, EMT, uh, another one was uh, a police officer. And lo and behold, they actually donated their time in helping these people in need. And uh, at some point, they actually gave uh, these Katrina victims like $25,000 like at, at one time. They just you know, gave them all $25,000 and said, here. Why don't you bounce back on your feet? Here's $25,000, courtesy of the American government, uh, go out and do something. Well, you know what these people did? They went out and got Cadillacs on dubs, all right? Cadillacs on dubs. And they basically would go out and, you know, hop through the town on their little Cadillac on dubs, all right? And then when it came down to curfew time down there at the FEMA camp, uh, they would park their Cadillacs on dubs across the street, walk their dumb uh, freeloading asses across the street into the FEMA camp and get themselves a cot. They'd get themselves a cot and they'd sleep there for the night until it was morning time and they'd take their little Cadillac on dubs and go do it all over again. I mean, isn't that great, folks? This is a, this is the America that we've come to know and love here, right? Huh? I mean, you, you know, you know what really uh, gets me upset is that we got Katrina that happened, and yet, you know, the people that got most devastated, they want to stay there. You know, they like want to stay in. There. I'm gonna stay in the ninth ward, baby. Yeah, I'm gonna stay in the ninth ward. It don't matter, man. You ain't gonna take me away from my hood. You know what I mean? You're not gonna give me my hood, man. Yeah. Okay. Six four six six five two four eight six nine is the number to call here. One one one, you there? Uh, 
glad you turned that crap down, you stupid silly bastard. One, one, one. You there? What's up, man? What's up, man? How's it going? Well, uh, I wanted to ask you a question about Glenn Beck. Uh, I understand we were on the topic earlier, but we didn't seem to get much further into it, so I had a question about it for you. All right. Uh, do you think that Glenn Beck might be a magnet? Hey, stupid, silly bastard. You know how old that is? That's older than the crustaceans in your mother's kumquat. All right? You get no lulls for that one, asshole. One, one, one. You there? Yo, go call big yo dick, nigga. Oh, Jesus Christ. We got, we, we got some idiot over here who thinks he's a brother. I can tell you're a cracker-ass cracker from your little stupid voice. You, you know, you, First of all, you're trying to make it lower than it is, so I know you're some cracker that was raised by your mammy, all right? And then, and then you try to do the black dialect, which is the fakest cracker-ass cracker dialect I've ever seen or heard in my life. I mean, if you were going to actually, you know, uh, come up and sound black, why don't you sound black, all right? Why don't you sound black like, like this? <clears throat> hey, what's up, blood? You know what I'm saying? Chill like a villain, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, instead of trying to help a nigga, you destroy your brother. You know what I'm saying? Instead of trying to help a nigga, you destroy your brother, baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, growing up in the hood. You know what I'm saying? Hey, look, I'm going to rap a little bit of this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's go ahead and put some of that, some of that old school DJ screw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Chillin' like a villain, baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey. Listen. Hey, let's rap a little bit. It's a beat. Don't try to mess with me, sheep me like I shot a Kennedy. I'm up here, here, in blow talk. I can walk the walk, talk the talk. Niggas out here trying to fake, but everybody knows it's the money I take. I'm for the capitalist motherfucker to the soul. Capitalism to the motherfucker bullet hole. I don't give a fuck about a nigga trying to talk. Like I said before, these niggas caught a ball cap. They trying to law at me. They trying to stall at me. They trying to go get me. But they can't beat me. Like I said before, I kick your ass out the door. Smoking the fifth, saying I want to smoke. Of some of that shit. Some of that drink. Everybody knows them straight up the thing. Yeah. Man. All right, that's enough. I've had about enough being a black guy, all right? <clears throat> I've had about enough being a black guy, and i got some people in here saying, Oh, my God, that's awful, Ghost. I can't believe that you're trying to, you know, put on blackface or something. Look, I- I'm just doing what they do, all right? I'm just doing what they do now, all right? So give me a break. And all you people that are getting offended will want you to, you know, put a condom on a G.I. Joe on it, sit on it. Because that's the only gratification that you're going to get in your no poontang getting life. All right? 646-652-4869 is the Nizumber to call. 111, you there? Hello. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing, man? Chilling. That's cool, man. Right there, I'll tell you how I became the prince of a town called Bel Air. Now, why do y'all, why do y'all and it's like that song so much, man? That is the weakest rap, you know? The Bel Air, the Bel Air song, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That's what you're bumping, you know? That's what you, that and that chocolate rain. I'm sticking a finger up my ass because I like chocolate rain. I don't know if I'm Indian or black because I like chocolate rain. I mean, give me a break. I mean, good God. That chocolate rain guy should be kicked in the balls, all right? Honestly, he should be kicked in the ball sack. All right, Leslie, you there? Nigger. Nigger, nigger, nigger. You, you piece of shit. Is, Shut is the fuck up. Shut is, the... Is, that, is that a win? Well, first of all, uh, we can barely hear you because your weak-ass little Internet connection can barely bring up the voice packets to come up on here and, and broadcast it on this broadcast. And uh, you sound like a stumbling, mumbling little jerk with the mic shoved so far up your ass that we can actually hear your voice echo through your colon. 
All right, so for you to sit over here and, you know, uh, actually thinking that you're doing win with that stupid garbage, I mean, give me a break. It's, this, is, this is disgusting, man. But this is American creativity right here, you know? Now, this is American creativity. This is it right now. This is it. All right? I mean, this is how original they're getting, you know? They can't even say, uh, hey, Ghost, is your uh, computer running? Yeah, is your computer running? Yeah, dude. Well, then why don't you go catch it? <laughs> Give me a break. <sighs> I mean, I get jaded, man. I get jaded every time I do this broadcast, you know? I was supposed to uh, talk a little bit about uh, uh, Hurricane Earl, uh, but it sounds like uh, a lot of those people that are calling me are on the East Coast, so you know maybe you know you deserve a little bit of uh, uh, discomfort in your life, you East Coast bastards. I don't, I, you know, all you all you people, you know, sit here and you, you talk garbage about Texas. Don't you understand that Texas has the top ten real estate markets in the nation? It's the number one place to do business. And you know what? Since we're talking about Texas, I want to talk about Texas right now. Now, we have a governor's race here in Texas where we have a character by the name of Bill White. And let me tell you, if you happen to have a retarded kid, or well, not a retarded kid, but a retarded-looking kid, you know, one of those kids with a with a with an eye out of whack, or you know, they got a a weird-looking face and bug ears, or something like that. Uh, well, you know, a Bill White shows you that you know, even if your kid looks like half a tard, uh, you can still, uh, you know, it'll it'll still grow up to be somewhat uh, normal, but. What's unfortunate is that Bill White is actually, you know, he's a governor. He's running against Rick Perry. Rick Perry, uh, you know, uh, I, I hate to say this, but I have to endorse uh, Rick Perry because uh, this man has legitimately made Texas the most sought-after destination in the nation because we have great business, the great real estate market that we have. And let me tell you, we're hiring. I know all across the United States people are like, I can't find a job, ghost. I gotta go on welfare. I gotta go on all the government program, baby. I gotta do all that, man. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got no job, baby. Well, once you come down here to Texas, you come down here to Texas, you're gonna find a many, uh, a many a job everywhere. Many a job everywhere. And the real estate markets are great. We ain't, we ain't, we ain't losing our real estate markets out here in Texas. And uh, the reason I want to talk a little bit about Texas politics is because I want Rick Perry uh, to be reelected. All right? I mean, let's be honest. This man has done uh, uh, a minimal possible. He has not expanded government. Uh, he has kept taxes low. Uh, he has, uh, you know, basically decreased spending at all costs. I mean, let me, let me tell you uh, something that's a little funny about Texas. Not only are we the best economy in the entire nation, not only do we have the best real estate markets in the entire nation, but also, all right, we are 48th in education, which means we're pretty down on the totem pole when it comes to education down here in Texas, 48th. But that should go to show you that we don't need to invest in some broken bureaucratic uh, uh, public education system. Uh, I've said this before, and I'll say it again, all right? It'll be a great day, a great damn day in American history when these damn little uh, uh, teachers are out of work in an unemployment line having to be accountable for all the screw-ups they've done to our youth in America today. All right? And, and you know what? I, I know I keep doing this, but it bears repeating, folks. It bears freaking repeating. They have thrown our children, all right? I'm, I'm talking about the baby boomer generation the bureaucrats that are in power today in our government, the idiots that are in public education, uh, I mean, the parents of the children, they have all thrown their children into wood chippers. They've thrown them all into wood chippers. So let's go in audio effigy and turn on the wood chipper. Let's turn on the wood chipper and let's throw the children into the wood chipper. Let's throw the children into the wood chipper. All right, throw the children into that wood chip. Yeah. <laughs> 
me, but that's what happened. You know, anybody who's under the age of 30, your children, or excuse me, your parents threw you into a wood chipper, all right? And that's what that signifies right there. That's what that signifies. An audio effigy of your parents throwing you into wood chippers. That's what they did, you stupid, milky-looking pieces of nipple clamp-loving trash. Let's take some more callers here, 646-652-4869. You know, we're talking about Texas politics and how anybody who's living in Texas should be going out there and voting for Rick Perry because, uh, well, we've got the greatest economy in the nation, and everybody's trying to move out here. I'm, I'm, let me tell you, if you live out here in Texas, you can count the amount of carpet bagger license plates like you're going out of goddamn style. Anyway, six four six six five two four eight six nine four one two. You there? Hi, Gus. How's it going? What's up? Uh, not much. Uh, I've been listening to your talk show for about thirty minutes now. I read on the site that this was real conservative talk. I have heard little or nothing of anything with real substance, Ghost. You don't seem to talk about any real politics other than the politics that revolve around your own state, and just a ridiculous amount of rambling and poor impersonations that I don't think anybody finds entertaining. I was thinking about all this, and you're just wasting your radio time screaming, throw the children into the wood chipper. What is this shit? What is the purpose of your talk show? You haven't said uh, I'll tell you what the purpose is there, 412. First of all, you sound like you just popped out of the anal passage of George Michael service in a glory hole in a Los Angeles uh, County uh, park bathroom. And for you to sit over here and try to make judgment calls about how I'm not, uh, you know, making any kind of substance, I have thrown substance upon substance upon substance on the debating table, and the best you can come up with is sitting here sounding like some fruity-ass little fairy attempting to facilitate nothing but, um, you know, you just say, you know, say nothing. So, look, I'm going to let you right back on here, all right? I don't want to hear your little fruity-ass voice. Is there something wrong with the American youth today? They just can't, they just don't have any bass in their voice. They all sound like they're taking it up the shit funnel. Uh, 412, are you there? I, I'm here. Yeah, why just, do you sound like I'm you're taking astounded. a couple up the shit funnel? You know what, I really don't know. Okay, you're a douche, though. I mean, I'm just astounded at this talk show that anybody would even listen. You say nothing of real substance. You just wasted at least two minutes of your time going on and on about the wasted youth of America and how stupid we are. While I was You dumb idiot. Why don't you clean the crustaceans out of your ears from your boyfriend banging you in the ear hole and listen. I said that your damn parents threw you into the wood chipper, you stupid, silly little fruity bastard. All right? Stop, you know, whacking off to a naked picture of Ricky Martin's butt crack and listen to what the fuck I said, you stupid, silly bastard. I said that the youth of America are taking it up the tailpipe, and you can tell by their fruity-ass vernacular that they are. They're taking it up the tailpipe because their parents have sold them a lie. Do you understand? These baby boomers, by the time they were your age, they were out there uh, partying, having mud pit orgies at Woodstock, dropping acid, smoking is you know more reefer than you could ever get your hands on. Uh they they were they were doing all kinds of disgusting nonsense that are they're telling you that you shouldn't do. They're forcing you to, to sit here and say, Yeah, you know what I gotta do? I gotta be a good little boy and a good little girl and I gotta go to college. Yeah, that's what I gotta do. I gotta go and I gotta go to college. That's what I do. And you know what you do? You go to college, you get yourself in debt about sixty, seventy thousand dollars before you even enter into the employment game and by the time you get out of college, you realize there's no jobs. They all went out to goddamn China and India and South America and, and, and everywhere else uh, across the international community. And what are you left with? You're left with a, you know, whatever, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 student loan payment that you have to pay for for life. Remember this. That student loan payment, you can't file for bankruptcy on, all right? You can't just go and say, oh, I don't, you know, I can't pay for it. You got to pay on that for life, and now that the government—I don't know if you've noticed this—but the government is taking complete and total control of the student loan business. So now, if you don't pay your student loan, you go to jail. So what do you got to think about?
about that there, 412? You going to college? Uh, I was planning on it. Yeah, well, you you want to know why you're planning on going to college? Because Mammy and Daddy sold you a, a lie. And you know what you're going to do when you go to college and you come out of college and the best you can do is become a barista at Starbucks? You know what you're going to do? You're going to take the beans, the literal beans that you make each week, and you're going to have to pay a Social Security tax on that. Oh, yeah, all the beans and peanuts that you make off of being a barista or, you know, uh, cleaning enema bags for a living or whatever it is, you're going to have to pay a Social Security tax that you're never going to see in your entire life. You're never going to see one red cent of any of that Social Security, and yet you're the one paying for it for your disgusting, despicable parents that have sold you down a river. All right, now, I have reiterated my point. Do you understand what I'm telling you, 412? I am understanding, but so you don't want me to go to college. You would rather have me enter some type of workforce that doesn't require a college education. Cause I don't really no, what, what, what I'm saying is is that we got a fucking library on every damn corner that's been funded by the American taxpayer, and yet the only people that use it are the fucking po in America that are claiming that they're po, and yet they're, they're waddling their fat asses into the library using it as a free video rental establishment. That's what our libraries have turned into, you know. They, 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 they got the po in America waddling their fat cellulite dripping off the ears having asses, and they go into these damn libraries, and they use it for free video rental, all right? So, you know, all I'm sitting here saying is that you don't necessarily have to go to college to do anything. All you have to do is be fiscally responsible. All you have to do is save your money and not get these stupid overpriced gadgets that were made in Mexico like the iPhone or the, the iPad or any of these other technological gadgets made out of China on pennies on the dollar, you know, when you're sitting here paying five, six hundred, a thousand dollars for these products. I mean, it makes no sense. It, it makes no sense whatsoever. So what's your solution? What are you going to do, 412, when you realize after you get out of college and another thing, you dumb kids, don't you realize that it's kind of coincidental that, you know, your parents or nobody tells you anything when you're, you know, out there, you know, in your fraternity houses getting drunk and girls gone wild and, you know, all this. Why do you think they're not, why do you think the, the, the university doesn't say anything? Why do you think nobody says anything? Because they're keeping you dumbed down, like they've kept you dumbed down for your whole entire life. You know, you know, uh, praising crap like American Idol. You know, going to the damn Mickey Mouse Club and thinking that these were genuine uh, personalities. I mean, th this is what I'm talking about. You, you, the young in America re need to realize that they are taking a classic uh, uh, American-style fist fuck, and they are, aren't even being able to get a reach around by their parents, all right? And let me tell you what we need to start talking about, and let me tell you, I'm an old man advocating this, but what we need to start talking about is ending Social Security, all right? Ending Social Security because you have no economic opportunity. You can't get these jobs that your mom and dad had. Your mom and dad had cush jobs for 30 years with benefits and pensions and all these good perks. You're never going to get any of that. You've got to compete with a fucking illegal Mexican. I mean, you think you're going to get perks, you know, uh, competing for a job with an illegal Mexican? No, absolutely not. So don't sit here and give me this crap that, oh, yeah, education is so great. You love it. Shut your hole. Shut your stinking, smelly little hole. Piece of crap. I'm telling you, it's just so depressing when I hear, you know, when I hear crap like that. It's just so depressing to me. The youth don't even know what's going on. All right? They don't even know what the hell's going on. Anyway, White Snake, you there? Ghost is a couple Christopher Poole, and I'm ready to get with you, baby. Ah, uh, Ghost. Crikey. Get him off! Fruity ass. Piece of fruit bowl crap. 111, you're on the air. Yeah, well, we can barely hear you on your cheap-ass little 
flea market bought computer there, you cheap bastard, all right? I know this is a bad economy, but God damn it, there's so many overproduction in computers. You can get something better than that. One, 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 you there? Man, you're a silly bastard, too, man. Why don't you get, get a personality, jerk off? Hello? One, 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 you there? Talk to me, Ghost? Yeah, what's up? Hey, Ghost, I got a question for you, man. I'm, I'm being so serious here, Coach. Uh... What will it take for this country to realize that Barack Hussein Obama is the greatest man ever? He is so yeah, good. I can hear the black in your voice, boy. Get, get off, all right? I mean, get, give me a break. I mean, you know, come on, black folk. I mean, if, if you're going to call up here, the least you can do is provide some damn substance and not, you know, sit over there and crack up as if you just took a hit off the Philly blunt, all right? Put the blunt down. Put the blunt down. That's why you're living with a fat white girl so she can fund your little 78 Cadillac on dubs, all right? Put the blunt down and the 40-ounce down and get up off your ass and do something, all right? Give me a break. I don't have a problem with blacks. I'm not racist, all right? I'm not a racist man. I, I, I just don't like, uh, you know, poor people, all right? White, black, Mexican, uh, uh, the Poe in America. That's what I don't like. I don't like, like Poe in America. I feel sorry for the Africans in Africa that, you know, that are born into some dirt hole and, you know, being held hostage by the foreign aid that's delivered into their countries by their uh, disgusting, despicable regimes. I mean, that's who I feel more sorry for. I don't give a shit about the Poe in America. My ass bleeds for the Poe in America. I mean, why don't you go take a trip out of a white trailer park or a black ghetto or a Mexican barrio and, and just watch how many... Fat jelly ass bastards are waddling their fat jelly asses up and down the street. And these are supposed to be the Poe in America. Huh? Yeah, baby, I'm Poe. I mean, are you kidding me? I mean, you know, we live in a day and age where there's a dollar menu on every freaking corner. All right? A dollar menu on every freaking corner. We got a 39 cent taco at Taco Bell. And yet our government is still funding these makeshift, uh, what is it, soup kitchens? Huh? Soup kitchens. You know, you, you, you price how much every bowl of soup that's going out of there is, and you, you factor in the amount that it costs to rent the joint, the amount of cost that it takes to light the joint, the, the amount of cost for food, and all the people that are delivering all these bowls of soup. Every bowl of soup that goes out of a soup kitchen equates to about 12 to $15 a bowl of soup. And yet we've got 39-cent tacos at goddamn Taco Bell and a dollar menu on every damn corner in America, you know? It just makes me sick. You know, the American public really sucks, you know that? They really suck, you know? And you can tell anybody in the American public I said that. I spit on you people. I spit on you assholes, all right? And before I, uh, you know, uh, take another call here, I'm going to get another beer because I'm depressed, all right? I am depressed. You know, we got over 100 assholes in the chat room over here, and they're making me depressed. Go ahead and open this beer here. (sighs) Makes me sick. (sighs) Anyway, let's go ahead. 646-652-4869. Let's take some more callers here. Uh, Alex, are you there? Yeah, you talking to me, man? Yeah, what's up, man? It should say Beeman Jones. My name is Beeman. And um, my only question is, why do you suck so much dick? Did you actually win brownie points with some people that, and you hang up? I mean, are, are you actually trying to win brownie points with a couple of males? I heard a couple of males laughing back there. I mean, yeah, I mean, don't you think there's something wrong with a whole bunch of males gathering around a computer listening to the uh, true conservative radio program calling in saying, How are you so a dick? I mean, give me a break. I mean, good Lord. Let's keep it going. We got Steve from New York. What's going on? Yeah, go. I don't know what your problem is with New York, you know what I'm saying? I just don't okay. get your problem is. You know, you, you oh. said Texas cocksucker, you know what I'm saying? You know, I just don't get the problem with you. Are, are, are you upset that I don't like people from New York? 
No, it's just that you, you talk bad about New York. You know, with that 9 11 stuff. And you talk. Uh, no, just shut up, all right? The reason I don't uh, talk garbage about people from New York is because I've been there, all right? I mean, what are you people in New York doing? Are y'all taking it in the ass or something? I mean, give me a break. Uh, you know, once once again, as soon as you get off the plane, and, you know, when you get to New York, as soon as you get off the plane, it's a mixture of trash and piss and crap and sewage. And, I mean, it's just this stench in the air that doesn't go away even if you're in the most, uh, you know, closed up of buildings. You know, I mean, it's just, it's a disgrace, all right? Uh, I mean, you know... I mean that, uh, that's enough. I mean, and you know what really sad is that when uh, when when the New York Yankees won, you know, the I don't know, I guess the World Series or whatever the hell happened. I mean, all these New Yorkers just crowded the damn streets like there was fucking pepperoni pizza falling from the sky. You know, I mean, I, I'm just sorry. I mean, New York's just a, a subterranean crap hole. You know, it's just in my opinion. You know, sorry. I mean, you know, if you happen to be a New Yorker, you know, uh, you know, I, I like what Giuliani did when he was in power there. He actually cleaned up New York. It was even actually more of a dirt hole. If you if you don't believe me, why don't you take a look at that movie Taxi Driver with Robert De Niro, and that'll give you a good whiff of what uh, you know New York was. It was an utter, disgusting, despicable, should have been cordoned off nuclear waste dump. You know. But uh, Giuliani came into power, and he, he cleaned that uh, New York up, brought in private industry. Now uh, New York is the headquarters to all kinds of people. So, you know, it goes to show you what good leadership can do. One, 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 you there? How's it going, Ghost? What's up, man? Uh, not a whole lot. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying about a whole lot of problem with guys, you know, guys my age, uh, around the teenager age, youth coming up in America today, not having a whole lot of balls, not having a whole lot of substance to them. It's, uh, but I got a question for you. Like, what do you think makes it happen in this generation to where the kids are so heavily influenced, you know, as opposed to whenever the things were going on back in the day that uh, also influenced them to go in the same direction? For instance, during, like, the 80s and shit like that, there was glam metal, you know, where guys started dressing up like gals. They got lots of fucking makeup on. They got big hair on. And uh, it didn't. It, apparently, it didn't seem to affect you, you guys as much because uh, seems like you know you're uh, pretty on top of your own generation. So, what do you think makes uh, ours affected so much harder than the rest? Uh, I'll tell you, it's the you know, flower child generation of 1969. The same group of people that were in charge of this mud pit orgy called Woodstock that were you know listening to Timothy Leary and dropping acid and you know. Uh, uh, having love children and living on communes. Well, you know, those people finally grew up off of their little, you know, political romanticism, and they actually infiltrated the bureaucratic mechanisms of power. Uh, you have a lot of these hippies that have taken control of the public education system, and not to mention they have asserted this idea of feminism. Feminism is in complete and total control of America today. I find it funny that every summer, and we're, we're heading towards the end of summer, as a matter of fact, we just officially hit September 1st right now. Um, what, what I find funny is that every summer there's always some excuse for, you know, a good group of women to just conveniently leave their kid in the car in 100-degree weather. It happens out here in the south all the time. These, you know, these women, they conveniently leave their kid in the car and have them roast to death, and all they got to do is just you know, uh, put on this feminist cry, and, oh, I didn't mean it, and then they let them go. Meanwhile, they still have their purse. They still did their nails. They still did their hair. They still did, you know, all, they didn't forget all these other things, but they forget their kid. Uh, you know, not to mention that, you know, uh, the American male nowadays is being completely emasculated. You know, uh, completely emasculated. The absolute pussification. All right, the absolute pussification is being implemented on our youth today, and it's because of political correctness. Uh, it's because of the influence of the media. I mean, look at what's being uh, touted as men today. I mean, this emo-looking, you know, damn near leggings, jeans, fruity-ass little uh, lack of muscular uh, definition bastard. You know, that, that, that's what's become the new man today. You got to look more like a woman to get a woman. That I mean, it's just it, I don't even know how to explain it. But it's the influence of of the uh, the media, 
Uh, it's the influence of uh, individuals that are in the uh, music arena. You know, it's in the, it's everywhere. Uh, how, how do you live your life there, one one one? Well, I don't know, man. I was raised in the South, too, so, of course, like where I'm from, people work. That's where my uh, muscular definition and lens and sense of chasing women comes from, but, you know, that's just my thing. But uh, got to get out of here, man. You only got a couple more uh, minutes left, and it seems like there's a lot of people on the call. So one last question before I dip out. Um, do you have any battle toads? Yeah, well, battle toads sucked as a game, all right? You might as well play Frogger, all right? One, 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 you're on the air. Hello? Yeah, uh, you're stupid. I yeah, I can tell by your voice. You sound like a damn immigrant. One one one, you there? Uh, Niggy. Yeah, that's you. Uh, Niggy. What? My nigger goes. My nigger goes. What's up, Niggy? You stupid idiot, man. Why don't you get some lols or something? I mean, why, why don't you come up with a joke? Go to jokes. dot com. Rip off a comeback for heaven's sake. Good Lord. Anyway, we got eight minutes left in the program. I'm going to take a couple of more callers here. Uh, but before we move on, I'd like for everybody to please follow me on Twitter. Ghost Politics is the name to follow. Ghost Politics. That's the uh, only way you're going to find out when I'm going to conduct one of these sporadic random broadcasts. Ghost Politics. All one word, no underscores, you fruity-ass milky lickers. All right, we're going to just start talking. We're, we got eight minutes in. Uh, we're going to keep taking calls here, and uh, and then we're going to close out, I guess. 260, you there? Hello? Yeah, 262, you there? Yeah. 262, 260? Yeah, I'm uh, here. Yeah, what's going on, both of y'all? Hey, what's up? Um, I just wanted to ask you about the actor. The anti counterfeit. You sound like a stupid immigrant. Hey, 262, are you an immigrant? Hey, uh, am I on right now? Yeah, you're on right now. What's up, bro? Um, yeah, I just had a quick question. Uh, you were talking about um, the youth in America. Um, I'm from Wisconsin. And, um, you know, growing up, I um, pretty much have been seeing what you're talking about. Um, you know, a lot of my friends just going to college. Uh, a lot of them have racked up so much debt in the last few years. I, on the other hand, uh, you know, just decided to join the military, been in the military for a few years. Well, thank and, you for your uh, service, young man. Uh, no problem. Uh, I was just wondering, I mean, what do you think we could do now to possibly help ourselves for the future? Well, you know, it's very simple. You know, first and foremost, we need to stop spending so much of the American taxpaying money. Uh, the second thing we need to do is we need to hold accountable everybody who who is mooched off of the attack system. I'm talking about Wall Street. I'm talking about the car industry. I'm talking about everybody who got bailed out in stimulus package too. Uh, you know, for all you young people out there, read about all the garbage, all the the large sums of money. Uh, I talked about it several shows ago that was in stimulus package too. Is over one trillion dollars of kickbacks to cronies that donated to the campaign contribution accounts of the liberal regime. That's who got bailed out. And the second thing we need to do is we need to lower taxes and to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, private enterprise and business can once again invest without the government shoved so far up their anal passage that it's not even worth doing any kind of business. I mean, haven't you noticed that you can barely – oh, I'm a businessman. I have a, uh, several businesses – but you got to go through every bureaucratic mechanism of state and local and federal and, and all this garbage just to conduct business, and it's a disgrace. I mean, like I said, I feel like I'm being raped here. You know, not only am I being extorted money out of my taxpaying pocket, but I, I'm not even getting the representation of all the taxation that I am getting and receiving. I mean, I think that the American taxpayer needs more representation, and that's why I do these shows. Uh, 262, you there? Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm still here. Uh, yeah, you're right, I mean, about the government and everything. I mean, they, they're, like, you know, they're throwing out all these fucking stimulus packages and shit. You know, that's money the government doesn't even have, you know. That money's going to come from somewhere, and, you know, they're just taking it from the middle class, you know. Yeah, well, not only are they taking it from the middle class, you have to remember that all these little spending bills that the government does, it makes the money worth less. 
You know, that's why things are going up in price. That's why we're going, uh, you know, into inflation, because the government keeps spending all this money in our name, and we keep electing these bastards. We keep bringing them into power. You know, I mean, give me a break. All right, uh, a couple of more callers here. One, one, one. Uh, no, how about uh, eight, one, five? You there? Man, yeah, that's a stupid, dumbass Rick Ashley song. That is the most stupidest, dumbest, idiotic, viral thing I've ever seen on the internet. That's the most unoriginal piece of garbage. I mean, give me a break, Mike Hunt. You there? Yeah. Okay, what's up? What's going on there, Mike Hunt? <laughs> Mike Hunt, you there? Yeah, I'm here. What's up? What's going on there, Mike Hunt? Not much. <laughs> Not much, man. What's going I on? With my, you? I, I got my cunt on the phone here. Yep, you're right. Yeah, get out of here, you stupid, silly bastard. That's older than the crustaceans in your mother's pussy hole. Uh, it's, uh, 111, you there? Uh, give me a break. Breathing hard on the phone, for Christ's sake. I mean, what are you trying to be, a damn phone sex operator? the hell out of here. Uh, let me see. Sp- Spirit Baby. Let's check out what Spirit Baby. Are you there? I'm Baby Bus. I just took the m oh, for you, honey, Bus. Jesus oh, Christ. Christ. Get your I mean, I'm telling you, folks. I mean, you know, it's just, it's just disgusting, you know? It's just disgusting, you know? I bet you all these uh, people's mothers that have called up and prank called me. I bet you their clitoris is hang down below their knees, you know? Anyway, I don't mean to be so disgusting, folks. I've been drinking a little bit. I'm sorry. we got three minutes left in the program. I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. Once again, add to your favorites or your bookmarks, blogtalkradio.com slash ghost. That's the official website of this broadcast. And once again, if you want to be the first one here to listen to the live broadcast, you got to follow me on Twitter, man. These are sporadic, random broadcasts. Ghost Politics is the Twitter name to follow. And uh, spread the word, man, if you can. Spread the word about the True Conservative Radio Program. I am going to attempt to facilitate more shows. Uh, I want to hear from you. When I when should I do these shows more often? What times? Uh, I want some uh, some feedback from the fan base out here. Ghostpolitics at yahoo.com is the email address to send your comments to, ghostpolitics at yahoo.com. And uh, once again, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in with me. We've got two minutes left in the broadcast. Um, you know, I, I do not know when I'm going to conduct another broadcast. Um, so the best way to figure it out, folks, is, and, and I can't you know emphasize that anymore, is to follow me on Twitter. I, I know Twitter sounds like such an emasculating fruit bowl social networking aspect, but, you know, it's unfortunate that the, most of the people in the world actually use that as a way to interact and socially interact and that sort of thing. Uh, so please spread the word about the True Conservative Radio Program, and before I go, um, I, I would like for people to, you know, tweet all the verified world leaders, you know, uh, especially like Fidel Castro and uh, what is that, Venezuela, Hugo Chavez, and all these other ass clowns, and, and tell them about the True Conservative Radio Program, uh, because I would definitely like to, you know, uh, stop these stupid commies' teeth so far down their throat that they'd be able to chew their own little communist ass crack, and uh, there'd be nothing that they can do or say about it because they're in their little communist pissing grounds, and all they got to do is sit there and take it. Uh, so once again, if you could do that and, and tweet all the media and anybody else you think that would really give two rats asses about getting a digital backhand from the uh, one and only true conservative radio host, the man they call Ghost, uh, please, uh, yeah, 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 Medvedev, you know, uh, tweet all of them. Tweet them all, and I'll be more than happy to stomp a mud hole in their ass, kick it dry, and then take a dirty yellow bubbly piss in it. Anyway, folks, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. I may go on the Pal Talk Network under the name OG underscore Ghost here in about 15 minutes. I'm going to guzzle down a little bit more beer and, uh, you know, kick back a little bit. Uh, follow me on there if you want to chat with me. Once again, follow me on Twitter. All right, I can't emphasize that anymore. Twitter, Ghost Politics. All right, that's the name to follow. I better see a lot more uh, Twitter followings after this, folks. Anyway, long live the true conservative movement and death.
death, death to feminism. A Napa guy knows not to judge a man by his car's multicolor paint job or absence of modern gadgetry. Who cares if it's technically old enough to vote and the windows are powered by the strength of your left arm? Your monthly payment is zero, and it'll stay that way. Because with over 400,000 parts and a little Napa know-how, you can keep anything on the road. She may not be pretty, but she's all yours. That's Napa know-how. 